Hello there everyone and welcome to I think I think it's episode four of us playing as Alex Commissariat Ukraine. I'm your host, Mr. Ukraine Lover, but right now we are under attack from communists, and we don't like communists here. And uh, we've already moved in into the regions that they have occupied right now. But I think for now, you know, we got a lot of grain. We're gonna prioritize the soldiers because I think they need it. Um so it's cost thirty political power, which we just did. Gives the following effects, or it's a weekly stability, but you know what? Negative seventy three percent. I mean, at this point, what's what's point two more worse at this point? So, but we got a couple options here. Interesting options. <clears throat> we could have go with some industrialists. <coughs> I mean, industrialists are still unsure about the loyalties, but this one can change. Lebrant, or Labrant, believes that factories are crucial, more crucial than the others. Give him credit. If he convinces the council, he can trade off some of the current surplus uh, to the factory guards in turn for the loyalty, making certain that the war can continue as long as the government requires. Uh, we can secure the farms, factories. Why bother with haggling and so forth? This is war. There'll be no future for the industrials without the Germans. They can, be, uh, they can be left to rot a little further, while more supplies go to the army that truly needs it. The fact that this will make Oldendorf a hero to the military is irrelevant, of course. Rally German settlers. The German population of the Reichskommissariat are often quite poor, and the level of danger in the Reichskommissariat due to the banner threat has led many to flee. Something we cannot allow. Well, the council will not allow Brattagam to give food to the Ukrainians, will allow him to give it to the Germans, raising his popularity and morale with the settlers. It's not bad, but still. A collaborative brigade. Until now, Ollendorf has been extremely against allowing for a native partisan brigade. It seems that that same unit may need a change. For the first time, he's receptive to the idea, with his own stipends, of course, but with that stamp of the council, a collaborative brigade may join the ranks. Expand the group. Uh, group uh, more national daddy support. Cool. Weekly grants. Uh, uh, consumption goes down for 30 days. Is that worth it? Uh, okay, exploit the UNC. Um, favor the industrialists. Sent on the way to land. The Gotland government is currently assembling its own defense, but with the United Campaign, we can do more. First, we need to contact them. Well, loyal and high-ranking envoy, we can hopefully open up diplomatic channels. Request gone that aid. With the bombs to open Gotland, we now have the ability to ask for more. While they likely will refuse sending their troops, aid would still help us survive longer, thus saving them from battle. Reach out to Bulgaria. We need resources to survive. Bulgaria with a Slavic background and monarchist administration is hardly a normal ally, but it's a dependable one, stable after decades of service. They can provide help through Gotland that, that will let us last longer. Reach out to Turkey. We need resources to survive, and given the state of production and abilities, security food supply are woefully limited. Yet Turkey abounds with food. They're no ally to the Germans for now, but if we can get their assistance in the name of continental stability, we'll be better off. Reach out to Romania. However, looking to foreign nations for resources, our best bet will likely be the Romania, who has reasons to help us, food to give us, and previous ties to the Reich. It may be led by near democracy, but that doesn't mean they won't see reason. And reach out to Italy, even. War can create allies in strange places. Italy may be our enemy, but they understand our suffering. They have dealt with the revolution and fields efforts even now. They certainly have the reasons to help, resources to help. L large turtles creating diplomatic channels, but with our envoys of Germany essentially out of the work, we can, they can assist here. We could. Or we just keep killing the commies, because they left the capital completely open, and it's ours once again. Now, I'm not so worried about over here, since we do want to cut them off. Um, we're going to hold here and take out the commies first. Oh, that is not ideal, is it? Not ideal at all. We'll keep moving him. I, I do not give him a single, like, break. You're going to be offensive, and you're, you're charismatic. Beat the crap out of them. You get over there faster, 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 faster. They've got a little bit of momentum right now. Due to, uh, their national spirit. Oh god, it's summer's 10. Oh, and there goes Muscadine, exploding. Something we don't really like, do we? No, we don't. But it is what it is. Uh, prototype anti-air, not bad. Negative 0.86% stability. What else is new? Got plenty of guns, actually. That's not bad. Shave them down. Why give me one more, too? It looks like we may not be able to do very much here. Hold at the very least for now. Defending across the river will be probably our biggest goal. We need Kharkiv. Kharkiv? Kharkiv? Um, we actually might do better on this front, in all honesty. So I need y'all to move in faster than you can actually do anything. And I want you to be aggressive as well. Because it looks like you actually might be able to do more on this side than you think. This front is going to be much weaker, unfortunately. <clears throat> oh god, we even got cut off. That's not ideal. That's not good. They actually encircled us. That's why no one likes communists, you know? Do we have any planes? And if it doesn't go well for us, well then, well, nope, we have no planes. Pretty normal. Uh, 
a shotgun solidarity. The conference room of the RK in uh, Kiev had been nothing better th uh, than dens of intrigue for years. These were not the rooms in which great decisions were made, empires made and lost. These were smoke-filled back rooms where government officials grease their uh, way to power through corruption and po petty plotting. Now, through with the enemy at the gates, the smoke had dispersed like clouds in sunlight, Lebrant, Lebrant. But after Gavin Ovendorf sat together, pale as ghosts, where they once would have been whispering away to their associates in some, some dim corner of the room. Across them sat a bevy of generals, the vine men chief among them. Not here for once to beg for rations or call in some dirty favor from the party men. One could almost imagine Metternich and Napoleon sitting in this room deciding the future of the continent. How much of the country is under our control? asked Lebrant, beginning proceedings. His voice had an unusually thick edge to it, and he was trying to choke down food while speaking. Most of the east and the Donetsk base is controlled by the communists, Weinman replied. The west is split between the Polisian Guard and the Bandarites. The Nipper, for the moment, remains under control, but we need to decide on a plan of action. The partisans can be counted on to fight each other, yes, but they will undoubtedly annihilate us if given the opportunity. We must have a full mobilization, Olindorf interjected. This situation demands all of our efforts. This is not just some local disturbance, this is a fully-fledged rebellion. Once upon a time, perhaps a gunman Lebrant might have argued for no better reason than to not let the rival have his way. Now, though, with their lips drawn tight, they merely nodded. There can be no squabbling, not anymore. Our lifeline cut. Our calls for our aid from Germania. Go unanswered. No matter how many distress signals we send back to the Reich or other Reich's commissariats, our fatherland has abandoned us. And we cannot rely on them to send us supplies or men to assist against bandits. We are alone. Our men will have to steal themselves for a fierce campaign. This will be a much more challenging task than with the revolts in the 50s, but one way or another, we'll return the Reich's order to this law, this land, uh, degenerates and traitors. So we gotta rescue our guys, and we're trying to right now. I want you to hold. It's fine if we don't get it. The most important thing is that we push in and do the best we can here. And if we lose these guys, well, then I'll probably have to reload the save and not be so aggressive because these guys, we get debuffed extremely hard. Or they get a buff pretty early on, which really sucks. Well, look at this. Look at this crap. Terrible. All alone, yeah. Weekly stability goes down by 5%. Recruitable population factor goes down by 90%. The war within. I mean, my god. Like, just just shoot us in the head. And then they're trying. Don't give me oh, look at that. Disjointed force is terrible. These guys, uh, negligible bitter harvest, good. They should be starving. Um, the revolutionary inertia, I can't wait till that's done. Because once that's over, it's just going to pound town then. Because they're actually doing better on this side than I thought we would. When militia is beating our motorized, that's not ideal. So we gotta win somewhere here. And it looks like. We're going to win more easily in the West. Because they're too bitty, bitty, too busy trying to kill each other here. Did we actually break through here? Oh, that's fantastic. Come on. Ah, you scum suckers. Come on. You constantly want to attack us. Well, then we'll constantly attack you right back. Oh, look at those guys. Through through this muddy hell. Oh, happy January 1st. The German soldiers were covered in blood, sweat, mud, and scars. But France had no intention of letting the hell that Ukraine had become best them. The uprising initially been nothing but chaos. The soldiers were assault, assassinated. And partisans attacked from alleys of the forest. Fires have been set, and Zidane was thrown as a terrorist to try to burn whatever they couldn't kill. The streets have been filled with corpses, and the sound of gunfire rain as rain had been poured down, turning the streets into a muddy misery. Yet against the odds, they'd stop the initial attack. His face scarred from a Zidane and kicked in dirt. Franz was not deterred, but eager for payback. Their forces, is, their attempts to kill him had failed, and he successfully grouped his forces and set them against where the terrorists were hiding. Be it overconfidence or simple incompetence, the Ukrainians hadn't truly bothered to hide their camp, and which they had retreated after their initial attack failed. Some of his men told him to hold in place to wait for supports or reinforcements, which Franz had ignored. He knew no help was coming anytime soon, and doubted and men could be spared regardless, so they had to make do with what they had. The Germans descended on the partisan camp, breaking the meager defenses with an ease even Franz was surprised by. The uniforms were soldiered, solidified, uh, solidified, ripped, and bearing the marks of battle, they dismantled the camp and subdued what Ukrainians had been killed in the initial assault. Leaders and officers were taken away to be interrogated, while the remaining soldiers were similarly executed. As more rain fell, Franz was more sure attacks would come, but the advantage the partisans had enjoyed was lost. Now they would be prepared. Now the Lacks come would respond, and soon this feudal rebellion would be crushed. I don't want to touch that. I'm not touching that. This is only going to hurt us, so we're not touching that yet. Restore order to the countryside. 
Rebuild the government. Yeah, restore order to the countryside. Ukraine is in abject chaos. Fortunately, the cities under the control of the Rakhis Commissar Ukraine are still stable, since previous Rakhis Commissarin were able to uh, successfully settle them with proper German colonists and secure those colonists' laws and liberty with a strong police force dedicated to their protection. But the countryside lately has been plunged into anarchy. This has happened because various bandits have deluded themselves into thinking that Ukraine is anything other than a, German, a province of the greater Germanic Reich of the German nation. This cannot be tolerated, nor permitted to remain as anything more than a mere slight setback. We we'll deploy our force to make the bandits of humans remember that the fear we taught them during their glorious operation at Barbarossa. And I'm trying this without any, trying to get any uh, supply or support from anybody else. K25, that's not bad. Honestly, we're doing better than I thought we would so far. Um, what is this? Honestly, it's not even worth doing this. It hurts our stability still, but you know, whatever. We're doing way better than I thought we would. So, help them out. Screw it. They're going in there anyways. Algerian War. I just want you to be able to hold. That's I, that's literally all I want you to do. Just literally hold your positions here in the east. Which I don't think they can, but you know, whatever. Hey man, we're pushing here. If we can capitulate one, that'd be fan-freaking-tastic. Nice, nice. Keep it up. I wanted to get rid of the communists first. I hate communists. But you never know. Those who believe in democracy need to die too, apparently. Any upgrades? Yeah, yeah, more attack. I like that. Or Germania tries to come and kill us, probably. Hostage crashes in Odessa. Good thing's not our problem right now. Can you help out? Good. Oh. Don't worry about this side. Nothing's wrong on this side. It looks like they're exhausting themselves too. They might not have enough weapons, but deafening silence, crackling static. The only thing worse than static was silence. Again, Commander Alexander Konradi tried to make contact with Germania. Again, there was nothing. He spoke into the static regardless, in the vain hope that the connection would fix itself, that someone, anyone would pick up. This is military commander in Ukraine, Alexander Konradi, with an emergency message to Germania. We are under attack and facing multiple coordinated partisan uprisings across the Reichs Commissariat Ukraine. Repeat, we are under attack and require immediate support. How long does this last? Until February, huh? A month. And there was still nothing. No one knew what was going on in Germania now. The entire pact appeared to have exploded at the same time, of course. From Ausland uh, to even Poland, the entirety of Eastern Europe seems to be engulfed in violence and chaos of which Germany itself was not immune to, and so he continued trying to raise Germany for what seemed like an hour. Each time was met with static or silence. He continued trying, repeating the single message until his voice became dry. Look at that. The single plea for support while privately wondering what they would do if no help came, as seemed more likely with each passing second, would they be able to put down this uprising? Did these insurgents truly pose a threat? Certainly not, but it was concerned both about how much damage it would inflict before they were put down. Eventually, he was forced to accept the cold and forgiving truth. No one was coming to save them. Germany was silent, and they were on their own. Utilize spirit of visions. Hmm. Mobile is a conflict group. I like that one the most, but... Show to the settlers. The fundamental goal of, the Reichs, of any Reichs Commissary. The reason we're here in the first place is to settle the land with proper air and settlers in place of various criminals, bandits, and other sort of subhumans squatting herein. Therefore, their livelihoods are our greatest priority, far above that of any mongrel collaborator. The current wave of attacks against Aaron strongholds cannot be tolerated. We will now devote massive resources to protect our settlers, garrisons, armaments, trenches, walls, and fences. Nothing will be considered inadequate. If we can get hold of some extra men among the settlers, we have saved. That will be all the better. Ah, these guys are completely surrounded now. Interesting. Uh, you hold. You hold must best you can. It looks like they're trying to increase their garrison size forces here too. Just beat the crap out of them as much as you can. We lost 36,000 versus a lot. So where's our capital? Because we just finished a lot of good things here. If we can finish the southern front first, oh my gosh, that'd be fantastic. Finish these guys off, kill them all off, that would be amazing. Cause for concern, classified reports begin. Uh, concerning a significant reduction in available food stocks, inventory levels of processed food stuff, as well as constituent components. In state warehouses and storage facilities have fallen significantly from initial levels, with both current and projected replenishment rates are to be considered wholly insufficient to offset this decline. Current rationing procedures are sufficient for maintenance of basic dietary needs among the general population, both military and civilian, but this cannot be expected to remain the case for much longer. 
and decisions regarding alternative sources of food stuffs and or more severe rationing procedures are required with haste. Security regarding the food situation has been maintained for this moment, with only the needed parties informed as to the situation. However, additional resources are requested in order to maintain informal, informational control. Report ends. Quite worrying. But there's not much we can do about it right now. We have to do well in the West so we can beat the, uh, beat the crap out of them in the East. I mean, that's basically all it is right now. Good. We're doing way better than I thought we would. Um, we're going to utilize spare divisions. We live off our air force and an army, so it makes sense that whatever you, whatever field divisions they have, if you can, you can call them such, are many things other than competent soldiers. Others less loyal to the Reich than we say this in our years day in day out. They say we're better off putting our faith in the SS opportunists. Olendorf, are they mad? We cannot give them any more power than he has, unless he sees control of Ukraine and go off on his own merry way. The banish shall be crushed with the spare troops the Luftwaffe can give us will be of great use. The troops' weakness are beneath our notice. Absolutely. Oh, we have a little bit of, uh, I don't know. Don't worry about the debt to GDP ratio. It doesn't exist for now. Yeah, you're not going to win there. As we're slowly losing in the east, unfortunately. Because we just don't have enough divisions. Did they delete? No, they still have the no, no, normal amount of divisions. Yeah, these guys should have like nothing except maybe one truck division. That's literally all they should have. Come on, get to Pinsk. All these debuffs. And they make sense why we have debuffs. Oh. Good for you. Second revolt succeeds. Nice. Good job. How much you go here? We need help immediately. Good. Does that end their little rebellion here? Don't worry about the east. Don't worry about the east. The east almost doesn't even exist at this point. There goes Goring. Come on. Finish them off here. Finish them off. Finish them off. Finish them off. Because I'm going to throw at least three more divisions here. Go, 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 go. I'll at least stem the tide, my god. The only sane man. Ollendorf sometimes wondered if he was the only sane man in the room. Given how the rest of the Security Council was seriously considering the proposal of Alexander Conradi, it certainly felt like it. We have a notable number of men in Luftwaffe who are, practically speaking, useless. Conradi was saying, there are enough of them to form several divisions, which we can use as a stabilizer front of the East. Lebron was, for one, a baffling reason, seriously considering this as he could not thoughtfully. Shoring up the front lines is essential to regaining control. The divisions appear to be experiencing problems. Precisely, Dr. Komasar, or Conradi said, and Olendorf didn't fall to note, or failed to note that the man was intentionally avoided and calling him acting in any capacity. What the men need. What the men need is better training equipment and leadership, Olendorf interrupted. It was even as the frustration was close to boiling over. The issue of the divisions is not one of manpower commander, which I would expect you to know. Morale is non-existent. Serves the scene as punishment. Nothing you propose addresses the action problems we face. Conradi siphoned, glaring at Ollendorf. I know the, well the state of our military, Ollendorf, and know what must be done. The East cannot be lost, and this allows us to hold it. While your concerns are noted, Ollendorf, I agree with the commander, Leibrandt finally said. We need divisions of men in the field. Any further issues can be resolved when orders are stored. Commander, execute this initiative. Ollendorf quietly fumed as the commander nodded, apparently pleased with the decision. Yes, Alex Commissar Leibrandt, it'll be done. Shelter the settlers. As we will. Rebuild the government. <sighs> that is not the only problem that we have. It helps us nothing that, because of the nature of our government, large parts of our administration are in the German Reich itself, which, thanks to the chaos, we've been cut off from seemingly indefinitely. The result of this is that many of the posts ordinarily staffed by the people operating in Germ Germany proper are effectively vacant, even if the records claim otherwise. If we are to have any help to survive in this year without a collapse, we have no choice. We must find the new few loyalists. We still have and choose men from among them to fill these posts and allow our administration to continue operating until the connection to Germany is restored and the traitors are extirpated. Or exterminate, basically, from this land. Now we have more divisions to work with here. And we've got more divisions to work with here. And we just got rid of our other debuff. So we should be able to beat the hell out of these guys a little bit better. An extra from Gorg Labrant's journal. We say word today that Kiachkivsky's remaining men have been taken into custody. This marks the de facto death of the Ukrainian insurgent army. On some level, it's a tragedy for the Ukrainian race to see that spirits of war is cut down while trying to pursue the same goal of independence that I fought so for so long. On the face of it, our struggles were very similar. But they were far too rash in achieving their goals. They were rabid dogs lashing out at their companions. And just like any other sick animal, they need to be put down. It's uh, sad that they failed to see the endless possibilities of what could have been achieved together. Alas, it does not bear further contemplation. Hopefully it teaches Ukrainians what happens if they forsake us. Kiachevsky, uh, Shukhevsky, uh, Shukhevsky, 
Setsko and the rest of the leadership that led their men to attempt to reach for an unattainable folly will be executed, and they are all too far dangerous and unpredictable to be kept alive. I will need to remind Oldendorf to make the fair as quick as possible, and quite as possible. Those loyal Ukrainians among their ranks all respect for this delusional romantics, no need to alien our collaborators by turning the half-mad into martyrs. As a show of our magnanimity, we'll spare those low-ranking members who have not been indoctrinated enough by a false prophet at Mandero. We should be able to put them to work for our own needs soon enough. Menyx O.U.N. is in dire need of new blood after all. Let us hope this establishes his faction as a dominant one for good. Or it calls me once more. I pray for the day when there are no more roadblocks to a stable land where these people can be happy. These interruptions are so tiresome. Freedom fight by Germany's hands alone. As it should be. Honestly, we're doing fine. We have moderates. It's not great, but hey. The military needs it. And who are we to upset the military? Good. Uh, 52%. Is this getting worse at all? 47 and a half. Hopefully not. Yeah, this is this is not good here. Cavalry, eh? Honestly, we're gonna go this. One. Hello, this one. More defense for us is ideal. Oh yeah, they're they're definitely not as good as once. We don't have the, we don't have any debuffs. We definitely do better. I want you to consolidate your lines. I want you to hold consolidate. If they want to wear themselves out, then fine, so be it. You, on the other hand, are doing better. And we're going to need this altitude back. Kill yourselves. Communists, seriously, kill yourselves. Thank you. Oh, that looks like a riper opportunity to encircle them. But, on a basis. On a basis. Tired, hungry, and abjectly terrified, the settlers emerge from hiding in the morning after the insurgent assault on Shepatifka. It's been an eternally long night, huddling in their shelter, wishing they'd been brave enough to fight as they heard the screams of their neighbors. Hoping they would not be found as those screams ceased one by one, seeing the devastation around them that morning, they gathered what little good and left with haste. But the forest had no sucker to give. Safer than the roads, perhaps, especially after they saw what the Parsons did to the, those they captured upon it, but to have, but no have, indeed. At first they thought the swing figures to be animals, and then they drew closer and the horrible truth they revealed. The father recognized one of them, a man from the village, who clearly had the same intention as they. He had been gutted before being strung up as a tree, as as had his wife and children, but though more tortures have been practiced upon them. The family looked closely and said nothing, George John is skewing food or sleep in pursuit of progress or safety. Eventually, after several days and many more horrific sights of bandit retribution, the scene appeared on the horizon, and when they saw the Stahlhelms of the checkpoint sentries, every member of the family broke into tears of relief. Key was freedom for now, but the father, even as he comforted the others, could not but uh, reflect. The last atrocity had only been twenty minutes away. How long before they hear as well? Expand the UNA. The rebellion continues, and the assorted traitors continue to make gains at the expense of the Reichs Commissariat Ukraine. Bandits have proliferated left, right, and center. Our Ukrainian Wehrmacht cannot hope to sustain the fight against them on its own. It helps nothing that Germany itself, in a chaos, cannot hope to take action or send us anything but fraternal national social screenings. It galls us, but we have only one real alternative, the Ukrainians. We'll move to bolster the Ukrainian National Army, not so much as to become a tangible threat, of course, but just enough to work and be of use in our fight to pacify Ukraine, of course. Sons, where are you going? You chose death over... Uh, civility. You are going to reap the rewards. Die. Happy March. We're taking it back. The West so far, while it's not completely pacified, has done way better than I thought it would be. And, uh, good. They destroy our divisions. We just kill them. I love it. That's a give and take, you know? And they're just attacking all willy-nilly. And if they want to lose men like crazy, they are more than welcome to. I just don't think the Republic of Ukraine can keep this up, though. They're out of manpower. Stockpile-wise, they're out of everything. A bitter harvest? Good. That's what they should have. Look at that. That looks terrible for them. Scraps of the pipeline. A little more defense for them. A legacy of 100. Eventually, all they're doing here is delaying the inevitable. Are we out of guns or anything? No, we actually have more than enough guns. Everything else is really bad. Issue of supreme priority. <clears throat> a severe reduction in available food stocks. Ooh, I'm looking at a potential encirclement right here. That would destroy their front here. Ah, inventory levels of foodstuffs of all kinds, as well as constituent components, in state warehouses and storage facilities have fallen to critical levels, uh, insufficient to provide even minimal daily ration and take to the population at large. Furthermore, uh, reports from agricultural and trade officials indicate there's, that there's no immediate hope for a reversal of this trend. Starting immediately. Uh, 
A triage protocols must be put into effect at all levels in order to manage remaining stock and maintain general operations. State military personnel will receive absolute priority, followed by skilled workers and those deemed otherwise essential to wartime operations. Unskilled workers, those not in the workforce, and other civilian groupings will be prioritized and assigned ration stocks only when, of course, possible. Significant. Mortality events among these groups are expected. In addition, given the widespread de deprivation, informational security can no longer be completely guaranteed in social disorder. It is therefore also to be expected. We must take action now. Good. Let's go in, shall we? Oh, and the circuit is complete. Let's see if we can hold it, though. Rebuild the government activities of the council. As the Security Council convened, more than one of its members held a private wager with another on whether anything would actually get done. Is this still below to us? 50.7. Oh, that's pretty good. Good. There was a hope for a collective action, of course, for progress on the reconstruction and establishment of stability. The administration had demanded it. And so the temple would be made. But this was the Ukraine, all very knew what that meant. The mini began, agendas were set, and the first roadblocks were hit. All agreed that the council would offer the best ven venue for unity. And indeed, slow progress was made in the articles desired, but then questions were raised about how the form would work, and so began, identified by those members with long experience in Ukrainian dysfunction, with the undoing. Did one member raise his hand, or raise a mem question of authority? Well, was the council's mandate absolute, or was there some other power? This resulted in two opposing proclamations by the members, who were soon not supported by factions around them. Arguments subsequently grew, and before long, the debate occupied all remaining time, with nothing of note being accomplished. As they left, those with wages either rejoice in profit or suffer in loss, their fears being well-founded. They would, of course, try again, but the wages would be larger. Is there any hope? Um, weekly war support. Weekly change goes down by almost 12%. Amazing. I wonder if I, if I just poke them a little harder here, will they collapse? Eh, they're still giving us a good run for our money. Even though they're literally waiting to die here, but I'm okay with that. I don't care. Good. Look at one, two, six, seven divisions here are trapped. That is fantastic. And even if they take this tile, it will not be enough to save them. West African War, well... We don't care about subhumans here. There, help them out. And by help them out, I mean kill them. Like, get rid of them. Bugs. You know, they're communists, what do you expect? You know, help out here. They just attacked you, you attack them back, you counterattack, you give them what, what's good and what's coming to them. They paid the price and blood for this tile. I don't think they understood how badly they would pay for it, though. Ah! And there's one, eh? Ah, look at that. The communists overextended themselves, like we did, initially. How sad. To the strongest... Ooh, we lose a lot of political power and stability. We're all in this together. From the outset of 1919, as the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler had taught us, the National Socialist System was always built on strength. It was a strength that sustained us through 1933 as the decadent liberals were thrown aside. It was a strength that invigorated us in a great war against the generacy in 1939, in our defense against the communists in 1941 and the 50s, and now. In these same experiences, the outcome was always the same. Those without strength, degenerates, liberals, Bolsheviks, subhumans, were always cast down by the might of the Aryan people. This is not changing and it never will. There's only one man that can direct the will of the Reichs Reich in the Ukraine, the Reichskommissar, and he will be whoever is strongest. There's more political power. I mean, honestly, we're not even using it at this point. Green status is scarce. Not good. See, civilian supplies. I'm not going to lower. I mean, honestly, we don't need it. We're doing very well. Good. And we're on the offensive now. Both offensives. Both fronts at the same time. It's like America during World War, our World War II. Pushing on both fronts. No peace. No mercy. Why would you give mercy to people who don't deserve it? Hey, free military factories! Happy April, everybody! Ukraine will not starve. Well, depending on who you ask. Where are you going, sons? Let's go in. They want you there. Fant doing, we're doing better than I thought we would. Look at that. Crush them all. Crush every single last one of these filthy people. I'm really enjoying this campaign. Look at that. Ah, Brust Litovsk. Beautiful. Ah. 
Bowman has won the Civil War. That is not good for us. Oh, God. Ah! Shall all go in now. The dishonor of silence. The people of Kiev were rounded up to watch a show that the Germans put on for them. Crowd guards, or crowds guarded by machine guns, were here today to bear witness to the end of a story. Its moral being as clear as the daylight they basked in. This is what happens to rebels. In a front row view of the gallows stood Brautigam. This was a spectacle he wished to avoid, but there were no going to be no reprieve from it. Just like there would be no reprieve for the men of the UNRA. The trials, as such a term could even be used to describe them, handed out death sentences after death sentence. This affair was the capstone. The Brautigam listened to the mayor of Kiev begin a monologue condemning the UNRA. As traitors who sought to destroy the unity of the Germany created, he wondered if Lebrant wrote the speech for him. As SS Hangman cut him off by calling up the first partisan of the gallows, Yuri Horlis. Once a heroic freedom fighter who inspired hope for many, the man in chains cut a figure. That was far removed from the tales told about him. He jumped his way to the noose, surrendering himself to the rope as to see him free. The rest of the leadership followed. Brought to come, tried to disconnect himself from the proceedings, but was foiled by one man. Orloblin. He glanced at Brautigam as he marched to his death. His eyes begged him to speak out. Brautigam's mouth opened, but not a sound was made. It was as if his tongue refused to allow him to make such a fatal mistake. If he were to speak, his robs would set upon him like hounds. No, now was not the time. Olublin continued to the gallows as he realized there would be no reprieve for him. Acquiescing to the hope, rope necklace with the rest of his ilk, the switch was flipped, followed by a simultaneous snap and a strain of applause from the audience. One dies and one lives on. Should have done better. No growth, but hey, we you have you released your plus. As time for the full might of our army to crush our enemy. You don't get to choose. We have made ourselves abundantly clear. Explain the situation as if our Slavic interlocutors were five years old. But some men apparently still fail to understand that situation. These people somehow have deluded themselves in disagreeing with hard, cold reality that the luxury of choice cannot be afforded while barbarians continue to knock down the gates. Let us say it to them once more. Well, well, we will remind the Slavic subhumans in our lands of their servitude to the Reich and of their only choice, obedience. They have but one alternative to this, death. Weak th though we are, we can provide that to them if they shout for it loudly enough. Upper hand, Labrant stared at the message he was about to send, reviewing the wording. Precision seemed important here. To actively state his supremacy on topics of enforcement was legal and just, and yet a moose of fiery eyes to make Labrant pause. At the end of the day, the deputy liked writing, convincing. He was not one to strong arm, but it had to be done. The nation was a complex thing, but a party was a simpler, a collection of humans with the same foibles as all of humankind. Even the strongest Aryans still felt the pull of the group, moving them towards whatever position seemed most defensible, even Rosenberg. In weaker moments, began to hesitate and allow himself to be convinced by the pull of others. Perhaps that is why a lot of the SS and so many other plotters to take him down. Labrant had tried to find unity, but talking had proven ineffective. Brabant, Gum, and Olindorf were not interested in following orders at the end of the day. They are biased by their own self-interest. Common ground was not worth fighting with a group that would not even support their own Rex Commissar when Ukraine itself was collapsing. Common ground was a frick fiction. They destroyed Rosenberg along with so many other brilliant minds left as radicals. To save a nation, to save a mindset, the right move was a bold play. No need to hold back now. Very good. The collapse of the Communist Front 2. <sighs> Desperate actions immediately required. Inventory levels of foodstuffs of any kind, including constituents and replacement substitute items, in state warehouses and storage facilities are almost entirely depleted and no longer capable of providing supply to the even prior to groupings. Agricultural and trade bureaus are indicating no direct ability to counteract this and deterioration is expected to continue in the immediate term. Rationing triage protocols are no longer considered generally effective because the lack of foods renders any distribution control irrelevant, even for military and state officials. Furthermore, and as the situation deteriorates further, security considerations are growing increasingly dire. Civilian attacks and distribution centers, provisions and otherwise, are growing in bold in number and intensity. <clears throat> and it's further suspected that military and agricultural personnel are appropriating what supplies remain for personal use. Mortality rates have risen and grown exponentially across all groupings, and reports of human consumption have begun to be received, unless supply can be normalized in the very near future. General famine on a structural scale, with all its consequences, is unavoidable. Dear God, can we fix it? A flag above the ashes. As the flames of the Civil War die down, only one flag has emerged from the ashes of Ukraine. The flag of the glorious Rex Commissariat. Though the Mongol partisans tried to destroy German dominance of the East, the indomitable will of national socialism allowed us to triumph over what seemed like an impossible force. With the newfound military experience, we must ensure that such a grave error will never occur again. While we may have declared victory over the rebels, the breadbasket of the Reich is now smoldering ruins. The plantations have been burned, the fields have been salted, and many prominent German leaders were killed or forced to flee, and partisan remnants will still lurk in the outskirts of the colony where still. Most of the infrastructure that had been made Ukraine to the breadbasket have been destroyed or repurposed into something entirely different. It will take time to restore what was lost. While Ukraine may have returned to a rifle German hands, it will take much dedication and effort to on the part of its masters to restore the colony to its former glory.
Nice. I'm on the collaborators and police, huh? For the funsies, why not? Can we still do things here? Oh, uh, this is bugged. We probably shouldn't be able to do stuff here, should we? But since we're here, explore them harder. I want more development here. Good. Oh, we have actions here too. Um, stability is already terrible, so our grain needs will go down. No, screw it, we'll do it anyways. Nice. 30 days for that. Can we do it again? Because resistance should be dead by now, right? Oh, we can do it again. Oh my god. That's completely unfair. But I love it. What is this? Uh, we don't need that one. Good. Restraint. Good. All right. I don't know if we can. So that's even important to do, but pretty sure the businessman. Uh, oh, growth will go up. I like that one too. That's good. But I don't want to lower our support among the collaborationists. Um, oh, look at this one. Bring back the bread basket. Before the Civil War, Ukraine was a bread basket of the Reich, producing millions of bushels of wheat for Germany and uh, generating countless wealth for the owners of the plantations. During the Civil War, however, plantations inside partisan territory were largely ransacked and looted. Once we can reorganize these plantations for the benefit of the Reich and our administration, what exactly we will make them into has been uh, up for heated debate. With Lev Brown's proud to come all endorsed from their support, each having different ideas on how to best rebuild Ukraine's best source of income. The Reich's some sorry wins in the Ukrainian Civil War. A little surprise in Germany's breadbasket today, the Reich's Commissar government has retained control over the Ukraine. In a statement from the Ukrainian government, Kiev celebrated the end of the insurrection and reaffirmed its commitment to national socialism, the fear of the German people. However, some of the Kiev government, including current acting Reich's Commissar Georg Labrant, have proposed reforms to the Reich's Commissariat. Though the situation remains stable at present, cracks may be growing across the Reich's Commissariat. While leadership lies ostensibly with Labrant, the current ruling Security Council, composed of him, Otto Oltendorf, and Hotten's Otto Otto Brautigam, is on the brink of collapse as a three viper power. While the conflict is not yet projected to come onto the battlefield, it is clear that the fear of the chaos lies within Ukraine's future. The true leadership is found with those who take it. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. The earthworm in front of Bodan wriggled. Was it dancing or drowning? Bodan could never tell. Even as a child, he watched on the surface after a good rain shower and he just stared at them endlessly, deprived of anything to do really besides that. The dark made it difficult to see much outside the ditch he had hidden in, only the ghastly outlines of the trees. The sun was gone, and he could not risk lighting a fire so close to the German camp. He felt as if he was floating in space, with only two companions, an earthworm and a dead sentry. He felt a deep loneliness, for not even his cause would comfort him now, dead and buried like all the cliques he had bounced between them since their defeat. The German was younger than him, which gave him the odd feeling of years passing in minutes. It used to be that the Germans were his age or older. He spent so much time fighting that he didn't, time didn't pass, but here he was, a man sitting next to the corpse of a boy. Bodan wins, feeling as if he'd been stabbed in the stomach. His hunger pangs were worse, and he couldn't tell if the pain was from the uh, bad leg hurt less or more. Last time he tried hunting, he'd been spotted, tumbling down a hill and injuring his leg. Luckily, the German he was wrestling broke his skull. Sentries and camps were everywhere. Stealth was no longer an option apart from taking bites out of the camps. If he wanted to eat, he had to ambush the scout camps or eat the earthworms. He reckoned he could do it, but his leg might give up completely. So once again, he asked, did the leg or hunger hurt worse? Each one was just delaying the inevitable, for tomorrow his caved in belly would be empty regardless if he ate the camp's paltry food or the worms. His leg would still be useless against the regardless. Of whether he stayed put or not, he'd still be dead by the end of the year, regardless of whether he fought or not. But three more Germans would be dead if he did. He picked up his rifle and a fading echo. The air hung, uh, hung heavy with tension, and the weight of impending doom as Otto Oldendorf stood on the dimly lit uh, court podium, his presence commanding attention as he resided over the mass of Schotram. The remaining members of the USSR, their faces etched with defiance, stood before him, their face sealed within the clutches of his fascist regime. They, who were the ones who once fierce propagandists who could rally men with their impassioned words, now stood silent, their voices gaggled and the fate sealed. It was a cruel irony that those who had once ignited the flames of rebellion were now reduced to mere pawns in the Reich's calculated game. Yet a moment of opportunity emerged as a noose tightened around Alexander Shumutsky's uh, neck. His gag slipped, liberating his voice for a fleeting instant. Shumutsky unleashed his inner defiance in the brief respite from oppression, his words ringing with righteous anger. You architects of tyranny and oppression, your reign will crumble, and the masses will hang you as you have hanged us, he screamed. Tears streaming as he shuffled the gag down his chin. Long live the resistance of the proletariat and the working class, the property of Ukraine. Pandemonium erupted within the courtroom, guards scrambling to suppress Shumutsky's impassioned operas. Amidst the chaos, Olendorf, with calculated efficiency, calmly issued a directive to the guards to ensure the gag is properly tied next time, he said. It's so devoid of emotion or concern with the defiant proclamation that it momentarily pierced the suffocating atmosphere, and the gallows bear witness to de shattered defiance. 
Provisorisha Commission Muscovines. Von Saukin is here, huh? Now with a bang, how did you know Senko walk through the foreign land? Her homeland seemed to be a memory of time, chaos, strife, and hope. The liberated lands of yesterday have been contorted into a city town she could once call her home was no more. The Ukrainian flag had once so proudly, flying ever since the UNRA came to her town, had been torn off from its perch. How did you watch a lie, bleeding with gasoline alongside with other banners of hope in Ukrainian writings? The German soldiers poured now the last of their jerry cans onto it and let the matches of crowd suffer surrounding around it. Cheer of jubilation for the German saviors. The crowd was thinner than usual, so many lost. A German propaganda band crackled in a language that Haldinia was unfortunately familiar with, but could barely make out what it was saying. Ukrainian citizens today. Judeo Bolsheviks and eradicated from your land. The Reich's commissariat has restored order. The people around her were not full of anger or rage, they just kept clapping on blindly. She wanted to scream in face of every last supposed Ukrainian runner. Stand up and fight, we can't let the Germans win. But they already won, it was far too late. All she could do was go home to her hovel before despair claimed her hole, but a whimper. They also magnanimous reapers. Osaka, Osana, Oksana, could barely believe her tired weary eyes. When the German trucks had pulled into the village, she immediately got and hid under her bed like she practiced so many times before. Yet now here she was, hands out out as a German soldier handed her a slice of bread. She knew the war was over, her mother told her, but had, it had it, hadn't it been the Germans who stopped her from eating? That was what Mama said. When the soldiers pulled a box to stand on and began to address the growing crowd, his words, of course, meant little to the young Oksana, a foreign tongue she had not heard come, or come yet to learn. As his message ended, she pulled on her mother's arm, Mama, what did the man say? Nothing important, uh, darling. How could Anastasia tell her daughter that her boogeyman had suddenly turned on their heels and decided to play nice? The soldiers stood there acting like Samaritans, and as if they hadn't been murderers just a few days before. The mother and daughter quickly set off for home with their food, eager to get away from the disturbing atmosphere. As they arrived home, food in tow, the hunger of the last few months lingered. The empty seat to Oksana's right. The memories of her brother's skeleton-looking body flashed through her mind. Some things could not be forgotten. Hunger politic will be removed from her sordid laws. Remove Panacea. I don't like this one. More stability. Begin the hunting of the Partisans. When the Rexic Commissariat had a clear hold over the cities and the surrounding lands, most of the Partisans that were left behind began to hold up in their traditional hiding spots. This cannot stand. The Partisans are beginning to train the next generation of Ukrainians to fight against their masters, and only the Wehrmacht can uproot and destroy these Partisan cells before they begin to fester. The Wehrmacht may be tired, but it is their duty to the fatherland to ensure the prosperity of the area and colonies for present and future generations, which the Partisans will threaten with continued existence, but no longer ours. To the strongest. Efforts to promote unity have failed entirely, and factionalism of the administration are rages unchecked. Though this dysfunction hampers uncoordinated uncoord response, it does permit for various groups to progress their own agendas, almost unchecked, for good or ill. As the three Van Nordens uh, gazed up at their old house, Antonia leaned down to her son with a tired, weary uh, little smile. She told her son that they were home, finally home, stared into his eyes with a gaze that felt both weak and demanding. She held his hands tightly. As the Van Nordens entered, they were shocked to see the house so full. Rugs and furniture remained in their place, a fireplace to sell logs inside it. A massive object stood before them, things they'd never seen. Just like the officer said, muttered Peter. Bandit occupation, and he stared at the furniture with a grimace as if verifying it. He grabbed a small carved evil coal off the floor before a look of horror fired across his face. Uh, the carving had caught him. He dropped it. It, all, it needs to all go. Marcus stared at the level carving and grabbed it. This was something he could own, would like to own. It was not sleek or slender. The individual slice could clearly be seen, yet it had been carved with its wings so wide and outstretched that you could truly imagine it flying. As Marcus turned the eagle onto its back, he saw a name had been written in a script he couldn't understand. And Antonia plucked the carving from Marcus and placed a hand on his shoulder. Don't worry, my son. The bad men are gone now. They won't be coming back. That matters the priorities. Reconstruction has hit immediate snags. The bureaucrats are forced to stretch their minuscule budget to the breaking point in order to rebuild the vast colony. Most areas of Ukraine have barely felt the effects of the Reichs Commissariat's reconstruction efforts. And this lack of progress is both angering the German settlers and feeding the partisans with new recruits. With the council once again unable to come up with a comprehensive plan that appeases all parties involved, they have instead decided to give us whole bureaucrat an extremely limited version of this power. In order to let them decide how to best rebuild Ukraine without fear of the council's stalemates. The question is, is simply, who? If we're going to lose political power in the end anyways, we're going to increase growth. We at the very least deserve some sort of growth here. Liberals in Colombia, huh? Not a problem right now, so... Problems in the field. The Wehrmacht, when under the leadership of competent and talented generals, is a force to be reckoned with, efficiently crushing all of its enemies under the seal with brutality and dedication to the national socialist ideal. This is not the case for Ukraine's Wehrmacht. Leadership is divided and orders are contradictory, which consequently means the Wehrmacht does not know where to go and who to eliminate. This has made the anti-partisan campaign toothless and horribly ineffective, and the three men in the council are of course bickering amongst themselves, while all three recognize the need for collaborators to help to iron out the flaws. There were a question being tossed around by the councils of which group of collaborators to send. Leibrons, Rothgum, and Ollendorf, all of separate groups that they back and have come to an unhappy stalemate of the council. For Ukraine's sake, we must hope that they make up their minds on who to send, and send soon. Here 
at all stuff we could have done. But we didn't need it. Hey, you have the death set. It's looking better. The other thing is broken. A critical impasse is the occurred between the light bronze brought to come in Oldendorf, slavery, the UNC, and the econo economics of the Reich. The resolutions of which are crucial for the future of the Reich's commissariat have to remain unresolved, and in the Council are practically unresolvable. The three men have come to a conclusion that a truly comprehensive and revival plan is an infeasible goal, and now each of them has this taken to resolving the issues of Ukraine in their own way, through pitiful, meaningless, and often contradictory emergency dictums. These dictums often cause more problems than they fix, and are worthless in the face of the multitudes of maladies that the burning Reich commissariat is suffering from. The Biden Security Council will be updated to the factionalized Security Council and our sort of laws. Yeah, loss of stability. What else is new? Uh, Apollo Directives. As the dysfunction within the state continues, so too does it affect the bureaucracy. Conflicting emergency or actions delivered by opposing parties have a paralyzed general administration and governance to such an extent that the Reichs Commissariat seems to have been inefficient in comparison. There is no solution as of yet, and the collective anger of thousands of bureaucrats directed towards the council that they blame for not having yet resolved this problem continues to grow. There appears to be no end in sight. A corpse on the throne. Andrei Milnyak, the chairman of the Ukrainian National Committee, is dying. Though this fate eventually comes to all men, the timing of it in this instance is highly problematic. Under normal circumstances, the Reichs Commissariat force a successor, but with the current state of instability, none can be agreed upon. Milnyak himself refuses to make a decision. As he declines further, those in the state administration must ask themselves why they are serving. Leadership is required, and if the council cannot give it, it will be sold elsewhere. I thought we had Jorg Lebrant here to help us lead the efforts. What the heck? A task left unfinished, despite all the best efforts. The partisan problem has not only been contained, but indeed has grown. The respective failures of the Wehrmacht, SS, and UNA have allowed the formerly leaders like extremists or group rearm and most dangerously of all reorganize. The groundwork has been laid for an insurgency like the last years or longer, and those men of the Reich who have families here fear for their future. They're also worryingly and increasingly cast blame upon the council. Well, what would we do? This doesn't make any sense. Why would Lebrant just do nothing about this? Seriously, it makes no sense. We almost have time to increase this here too, but actually I want more growth. Ah, uh, jurisdiction. Fiction. Yes. 7%, almost 8% growth. Fantastic. The last office belonged to the head of the main department of food and agriculture was filled with commotion of what was supposed to be a simple administrative exercise and sorting acts and orders. Of course, simple. When it comes to Reichs Commissariat, yeah, bureaucracy is anything but, as Richard or Richard Wagner and Gustav Schlatter should have realized long ago. So in summary, we're dealing with a dozen jurisdiction disputes between the Ukrainian National Army and the Ukrainische Hilfspolizei and the Kampfgruppe Ollendorf. Wagner was massaging his temples as he spoke, his eyes almost buried in papers, and this is alongside all those contracts and grants Niederlande, Ost Kampagne, Kapani is attempting to claim. Uh, they bring, I think I forgot to mention Harima's allegations against a land management company that some of the farmers uh, it is building are impeding on previously contracts, previous contracts they agreed upon. Schlatter would never mention to Wagner, but he had more sympathy for Harima than he let on. He despised having to maintain the bloated state owned abomination. Right. It's a whole mess. Best just focus on the jurisdiction matters for now. Wagner needs something to bury the Harima discussion immediately. Germania will need to report on it soon, in my mind. I think it would be best to focus on Kampfgruppe Ollendorf. They seem to be receiving the brunt of the complaints anyway. Schotter felt twinges, a twinge of Kamaradshoff. Uh, this signified to him that he needed to speak up and protect his, his friend and ally, and so he raised himself from the back of his chair to give Wagner a piece of his mind. It might be helpful to uh, invest, uh, fruitful to investigate the Kurdish health split aside. LeBron is likely in cahoots with them to empower himself. I've heard the Baltic was conspiring with Shandrunk. A Shandruk. It would be worthwhile to focus on the Ukrainian National Army. Oh, perhaps the gun support among the bureaucracy cannot decrease any further. Uh, yes, I agree, Herr Wagner. Uh, best focus on the Kampfgruppe of Ollendorf. Yeah, of course. And a laugh and a left scarred. Continued devolution and governance has all but incapacitated both the plantations themselves and even the basic infrastructure they have relied upon for operations. Low revenues have rendered them uh, unsustainable, and there appears to be no plan or ability to save them. Though the state's industrialists all agree that there's a solution indeed, and needed. In order to salvage fortunes and lives, it's none can agree on what that solution is, and time is rapidly running out for all. Uh, parading a corpse. Oh, there goes Nixon. Goodbye, Nixon. God dang it. Fellow Ukrainians, I, I speak to you all. This is a painful display to watch. Andrei Melnyak have been taken out of the hospital to put on, be put on display for the UNC in our turmoil. We must band together. His attempts to finish a floundering speech were cut off by the vicious coughing of fit as he stumbled back to his seat. The councilmen applauded him before commencing their day-to-day -day schedule for the meeting. Melnyak, meanwhile, fell asleep in his seat, only woken up by his Wehrmacht guards who almost carried him out of the building at the end of the meeting. Roman Shushko and Oleg Schutzel are left to exchange choice words with each other on the affair. So they dragged Andre out of his bed and put on a little song and dance for us. Shudo's tone was a wonder of resignation. He knew it was natural for the Germans to do something like that to him. It was not right, but it was another humiliation he would accept. I thought he had done his duty. Let him retire in peace. 
I've always admired Melnyak, but everyone knows that it's time to go. We need someone new to lead us. Shushko always saw him as a Melnyak to the end, but even he had to agree to shoot him. Melnyak's time was over in the UNC. Have you heard anything about Tsitsiborski's pleas for new leadership contest? Stonewall didn't even try to acknowledge it. Shuto's voice lowered to hush for her upcoming re revelation. Someone's playing tricks out here, high up. They're deliberately trying to keep Milnik on so none of us build up our own power base. I think I just know who it is. Lebron has some pet project he wants to install as leader. Lebron's gone. He's trying to delay this as long as possible for some pick of his own to lead. All the he wants us to stay as weak and irrelevant as possible. Lebron's gone. He's that little rat. That nation without kings. The nation's exhausted by conflict, disorder, famine, and much more than that above all. What well, the people want is stability. Peace. Yet none can be found in Kiev. Every element of the government is divided. Quarreling over issues large and small alike, and the violence only escalates. The next commissariat must have a rule of law restored to it, and as long as the council reigns, it is not evident that the rest restoration will be near impossible. No orders, no funds, no service. We should round up one of the men from every family here from, to uh, Telezinsky. Erwin Weinman. I muttered as he tiredly traced a finger around the map of Kiev Oblast. Grow the lot of them for information and get a list of names, find the odd ones out, and then the SS man's hand clenched to a fist. We'll do something that will remind these scum why they cowered before us as we did back in the 40s. If our manpower reserves were like what we had in the 40s, maybe we could have. What are you talking about? This companion relied, or he, an exhausted sign, massages for him. Trying that now is going to stretch us out too thin, and we're going to chase away the few collaborating locals we still have. Alex Brooks looked up to his, lock his tired eyes with the seething SS man. If it were up to me, I'd call for a draft of local police and settlers and start setting up new checkpoints and patrol routes, but it is a matter of either of us wants. His gaze turned to a rueful sneer before he pointed a finger at the map towards the headquarters of the Security Council. So, oh, crap, are they still at it? A Vyman's tone bordered on a growl. The longer those idiots keep this up, the longer it'll take for us to get approval or funding for a truck of sandbags. The now space now becoming more agitated with every step before looking back at Brooks. At this rate, holding key will be a challenge on its own. Halting bad resurgence is going to be outright impossible. Uh, Brooks closed his eyes and gathered his thoughts before speaking. Well, at least uh, we both know who is to blame for this. Vyman Scott before nodding. The scum Lebrant. About to come. Then we're on Ollendorf, of course. And grinding to a halt. It is the overall attempt at a reconciliation between the factions within the state of failed. Any deal is possible if either been made or fallen through, and any possibility for the cooperation has been exhausted. There's no longer any action that can be taken. As the apparatus of the state seizes up and falls, all that can be hoped for is the sudden appearance of a competent leadership before everything else falls apart. It calls important to us, supposedly. Hello, Hendrik. Please tell me you have good news. Harim is being controlled around the court of his phone, waiting in anticipation. Again, with these delays from the UNC, we basically capitulated to the last catalog of bureaucratic demands. Harima knew that Hendrik was trying his best, but it was beyond frustrating for him. Harima's farming collectors were just not as lucrative adventurers. They were a point of pride for him. They represented the rich, untapped wealth of Ukraine in an oasis of salvation that contrasted sharply with his own decaying homeland, a place of consistent decline. The granite was vying for order to resurrect his dream. Debates? What is there to debate about? And now this once promising land of opportunity is choking his business to death with red tape. The Ukrainians will have plenty of time to talk about new street names once they get more important matters out of the way. Listen, Hendrik. You're a resourceful man. I'm leaving this up in your hands. Goodbye for now. The receiver slammed into the handset as Harima's mind began to wander. This was not his fault. That much was obvious. The most obvious fault was a grossly inefficient UNC. But perhaps the problem lay deeper than that. Maybe someone somewhere along the line was deliberately withholding this grant. All roads either led to Lebrant, Bratzgam, or Oldendorf. One of them wanted flexor muscles, and he was a victim. No more. Harima began to dial the numbers of his business colleagues in an effort to spread some dirt on. Lebrant? That deluded fool's toys were getting in the way of making money? Bratzgam, that naive dote. Knows nothing of the Verbauer spirit, and Ollendorf has self righteous views of how to show complete ignorance of the importance of the farming collective. I like that we have options here to continue on, just in case that we don't get this here done. Um, industrialists, well, Brautigam, huh? Brautigam has to go down. Doesn't help out us too much here, but we're doing what we can. Among, what is this? The bureaucracy? I mean, it's for millionaires. I don't mind getting that for 20 more political power. I'm okay with that. Not good enough. Hey, this helps us. It starts our political power. We get more growth. The final hours. Olander last visited Melnik a few weeks before his death on some routine meeting. Back then, Andre Melnik was still capable of occasionally mustering some odd conversation, but the two men did not speak a word. Olander simply stared at the man as he placed a routine form on his desk, as if studying a creature. Ollendorf was not as a rabid and blunt in his actions as Eric Koch, but they both did understand Melnik as subhuman by nature. No reason to dignify the moment with a response. Lebron was last visited in a moment of fury, angry that Melnik seemed to be ignoring his many calls and orders. As soon as he arrived, he realized what had happened. Even still, Lebron could only feel sympathy. Yes, Melnik's disease had clearly deteriorated, but... Uh, man's physical strength is a reaction to the will of their essence. Melnik and Lebron were similar men, but one had the will to triumph and one failed. Lebron left in a huff and rerouted his work to a proxies from then on. 
but I'll have to come last visit to Milnik in a few hours before his death, hoping that the man might be lucid enough to give him, uh, the diplomat, a moment of support, some kind of a grip on the rapidly decaying bureaucracy. Milnik, his glassy eyes could not even meet his gaze, unloved and unuseless, the last Ukrainian rotted away. You'd think we'd get a little more stability now, but whatever. Death of a chairman. Uh, chairman Melnyk. Chairman Melnyk. Ah, oh, good morning, T. Melnyk. What is love foot? Melnyk's secretary pushed up in the superior's office door, expecting to hear a weak greeting from the chairman. Instead, Melnyk was silent. His torso slumped onto his desk, his skin made pale and sallow by rigor mortis or by office lights. The secretary put down the uh, T set and checked his pulse. Nothing. The secretary bowed his head for a moment. Perhaps in better days, his first thought would have been on memorials and decorum. Melnik would have liked, but there was no time for such nasties. Quietly, as if not to disturb him, the secretary pushed Melnik's heavy frame aside and reached for his telephone. A few people, people would need to be called. Melnik's wife, his few lasting friends, the Lebrant, first however, came succession. And yes, yes, I understand. My condolences to Pan Melnik. He was a great leader for the Ukrainian people, despite our differences. Pablo Shondruk expected he would have been had a great reaction to the news. Melnik was a fellow veteran of the siege, a freedom fighter for Ukrainian. A long time acquiescence, but all Shandruk could think of was their meetings together. Melnik pointed at a map, relaying German instructions, telling the old general which villages need to burn. Instead, Shandruk chose to focus on politics. Before you consult anyone else about this matter, I am going to give you a list of names. Inform them of the news. Discreetly, tell them to message me at their earliest convenience. We are going to have a meeting of the Ukrainian National Council in the following week, and we must stand as a united front to choose a successor. As for the Rex Commissar, I recommend you use tact. The order. Kozinskov's Kozinskov's voice was cracked and warped, but his words were clear. The UNC had discovered that Andrei Melnik had died in the night. Georg Labrant, from his man in the south, was already arranging papers and giving notes. Uh, Kozinskov was Labrant's most loyal protege, one of the few Ukrainians who knew he could trust, the, trust implicitly. He clearly needed to find the successor, or be the successor. Yet in doing so, by propelling a fairly controversial man into the top slot, yes, the Ukrainians were intelligent in their own way, but they also consistently proven in real need of guidance during these times of crisis, after all. It was a radical and warped kind who attempted revolution. Their psychology was one of loyalty of leadership, and only took a small number of disgruntled and motivated leaders to put them in every direction. The moment divisions appeared, the Security Council would have an excuse to step in and create a crisis. A party line was needed. If Kozhevinkov was to be the next chairman, he could have no opposition. Lebron put down the phone and called for secretary, still bearing his notes, and broke down an order to the man. Call Shushko, Shondruk, Shutel, even Tsiborsky. Any UNC member who might try to take this role, tell him all that for all reasons of national unity in this town morning, or to stand down and support the candidacy of Herr Kozhevinkov. Don't let them argue, give the order, and get move on. If I know the Ukrainian people, they'll listen. Look at all these people still fighting up here in Austin. Sad. Business as usual, the air brought tidings of change, yet Artem felt nothing really different. Of course, his work in the grand scheme of things was minimal at best. On his dutiful page, he wrote the letters and missives to be sent from the higher-ups towards the officers and bureaucrats of Ukraine. It was an old job, to be sure, but afforded him a thoroughly peculiar point of view of the minds that ruled over the Rex Commissariat. His fingers dutifully clacked at the letters, checking the missives he read to make sure that the message he sent along properly. Yet, yeah, something in him feels the ever-present sense of boredom, disappointment, even the turmoil of changes, or the growing tensions, the climate, he could feel every day he walked back to his office, he still turned to the table to write the same messages in almost robotic motion as if nothing was wrong. It's soon as growing haze of monotony, that perhaps a simple spark lit in his head. And he really need to look upward to the picture hanging in his dull beige office to remember why the UNC is acting through these motions. It used to show the portrayal, portrait of Melnik, but from one day to another, perhaps in the cleaning of the office, it was simply replaced, swiftly replaced, before anyone could even grieve. For it's not the temperate expression of the deceased Andrei Milnik that gazes at the office, it's by Le Lebrant, berating him for wasting time looking at the portrait. Without taking a single word, without even a single public appearance, just with a casual swap of a portrait, it was like the whole party had their leash pulled, and they could do nothing for the moment, unless the turmoil that rages outside consumed them whole. And with a resigned sigh, Artyom went back to work. And there's a, I have a sip of water here. Ah, I love water. They call us. The phone clicked as it was placed back into the receiver, and Olendorf felt a pang of regret strike him as the alternative back channel confirmed his worst fears. Readjusting to his newest circumstances, Olendorf lay back in his chair, reflecting on what could only be his last course of action. The collaborators apparently firmly within Lightbron's pockets, he locked out of a potential family of assets, of course. Collaborators rarely made a good political allies, and a German with the club was just as strong as a Ukrainian, if more trustworthy. As lamenting what could have been certainly been no more than a distracted man's waste of time, Olendorf began dallying Weinman. It's final then, huh? We lost UNC. The perspiration of the line was tangible, although Oldendorf could not find himself to partake in the stress. That's correct, Vyman. We can survive without them, but Lebron cannot. All this means is that we have failed to deny a power player's power. So it goes. So it goes? What is that supposed to mean? 
It means there's no point in stressing out over anything. Keep working at the other parties. If we only have so long to seize control of this rock of an administration, and if we want any chance of fixing it, we need to focus on what we can't afford. Case in point, this little charade is starting to hit its crescendo. I need my man prepare a pair for when this time bomb goes off. All preparations progress. A sigh echoed over the telephone line. This progress as expected and no better. At this rate, my to expect improvement beyond expected numbers would be madness. A thin smile curved Oldendorf's face. The base in paradise. It seemed every other day now that Vyman had visited Oldendorf's sanctuary. Though the Obust Gruppenfuel grew to appreciate Vyman's visits, or at the very least grow numb to them. Assuming we wish for the plan to succeed, we'll need to have the streets clear for what, at least an hour to prepare prior to the operation. Storming. The UNC would be a simple operation, with more loyalists, given the circumstance. We need to elect some of our more radical members, but that's the risk we are more willing to take. Ideological instability always seemed to be the greatest risk of operations like these. It's giving an ideological bomb and people like Nusk find out about it, not to mention what would happen when a hundred SS men lock themselves in a building of the Ukrainian nationalists. Uh, then we strike during the debates, take a hostage. Let Brown will see this as nothing but a blank check for murder, and this is his best chance to cash in. You'll burn at the stake. Oldendorf's face hardly shifted as his warning echoed through Vitamin's head, even as the slim grin formed around Vitamin's ears. I assure you that these soldiers may be motivated more through the black sun than the hooked cross, though they are more than prepared to keep the UNC under our grasp. Vitamin's grin widened into a smile that's so barely perceivable. The sounds of the room returned, and for hardly a moment, Oldendorf managed to hear that he alone set, uh, was, with, was what, alone with his work uh, once more. At the shelf and desk of paperwork, the barren walls, the firmwork door was only his accomplices. Another moment more, and he could return to that world. Then you will succeed in installing this catastrophe, is that right? Five minutes, second. Hey, Albus Gruppenfuhrer, you have no right to criticize my methods. Were your own not worse? I want to take out the Trentnistic government. They should belong to us. Velke Pora Bovania. The greatest military endeavors can be mistaken as a miss of. A massive moments of arms engaging in epic battles of might, grinding each other to dust. But as Europe learned decades ago, greatness is not measured by size but by effect, and the most effective way to defeat a foe is to leave him no room for opposition. Weapons, ammo, and supplies were locked across key from humble houses to manholes. The men were prepared, the date and time whispered in alleyways between clustered houses as a set at the set time, the moon moved in unison, ending the UNC headquarters as it closed, barricading the entrance as it moved towards the corridors with purpose. His men informed him about the news from outside. They ignored calls and notes of protest from the Wehrmacht. He scoffed at their inaction. After all, if the army of Germania really wanted to act, they would have long ago. They only had empty threats, but he had ordered his orders. And a fanged wolf still has bite after all. The room was cleaned in a hurry with a radio set up on the table as officers harangued the representatives of the Wehrmacht on the other side. With a quirk, quirk of his eyebrow, the young uh, recruit moved over for Weinman, who spoke calmly into the microphone. Under the order of Ollendorf, I have the authorization to barricade the headquarters of the UNC. Take whatever complaints you have to him, and don't waste my men's time. Anyway, for the reply, turning off the radio and glancing outside the window with a single remark, What a beautiful day, no? The police have fallen at the hands of Ollendorf. Well, that's not good. We have a mutiny. Illusion shattered. Shadruk, Shandruk, expected to gaze upon the headquarters of the UNC with the same numb yet tense expectations that have been building up since Milnik's death, however. Surprise was laid within his lap as his car parked on the sidewalk, for the walls and windows of the UNC headquarters were boarded off. Protests were outside with officers and bureaucrats screaming a barely comprehensible and mumble of words to a stoic, unfeeling battalion standing across them with expressions of barely held contempt. Those raised lips, cold gazes, a superiority that boiled his blood. He saw the writing of the wall, contempt that almost begged the crowd to turn violent with a shower of rapid splitting lead. Uh, Shandruk slammed the car door with more strength than necessary, both to calm himself and alert the crowd of his presence. They turned to him with a varying, uh, varying array of expressions, ranging from relief to barely restrained anger. The battalion didn't even give his presence a time of day. Take long, self-assured steps. Take a tone of control, but non-confrontationality. Confrontationality. Upright back and along proud luck, walk towards the door like you own the place. The Germans in the SS ultimately serve Ukraine, and they wouldn't risk alienating one of the UNC's pivotal members. Sean Druk walked towards the UNC, fist clenched tight. What is the meaning of? All it took was a single shot. The concrete cracked behind him, with an antagonizing ring in his ear of a bull that nearly missed. A grave silence had fallen upon the protesters. Sean Druk's skin paled as he gazed upwards at the door of the UNC, where a single man, his eyes hidden by black spectacles, held a smoking pistol. As long as he lived, Sean Druk would never forget the sheer anger and horror he felt at the man's words. A easy toxic tone of contempt and barely restrained blood loss. Please, Sean Druk, give me a reason to splatter your brain all over the courtyard. None dared stand. Hey, it's almost uh, Galenka Wirtschaft, huh? No, uh, for all the insanity that spread across Ukraine, the council meeting that followed the events of the UNCU was well, remarkably civil. As the anthem played, the crowd stood to salute as Lebron stood to begin a speech. A sudden audience responded with an appropriate, if weak, applause. Lebron began. His voice more dark and rage. 
ragged than usual. To the council before me, I bring you the warning signs of a weak nation. We saw it in Kiel uh, in the dying days of the Empire. We saw it in Germania around the tomb of the Reich's greatest hero. Now we see it in Kiev. A soldier strikes the pillars of the government. This cannot be tolerated. The UNC requires justice. Nay, the nation requires justice for the events that have occurred over the last few days. You must see that Weinman, the seditious minister who cast these orders, be investigated for his crimes, and we must know. Uh, Lebron turned to look at Olendorf, who might have joined in this treachery. Every opposing faction waited for someone to stand up to speak out against what Lebron had said. Many reformists and hardliners refused to collapse, staring off at the distance or talking among themselves, and yet none, even Olendorf and Brautigam, dared stand. For behind them, they could hear the bulk of the audience clapping, seeing them stare vacantly at the mouth of their leader. Behind them sat exiles, enraptured by the words of their leader, filled with a near cultish dedication to his vision. And they could see what the council might do to anyone who asked to question his leader. Lebron directs, and a nation listens. The answered call, already dialed, Minister Brautigam's phone continued to ring as the man himself looked on with concern. With the UNC at the peak of the chaos, it was clear that the crisis would define who would ascend to Cox's old rule and who would be thrown aside. In the next 24 hours, Brautigam needed to get his foot in the door and fast. Harima, he hoped, might provide him the opportunity of consideration if only he'd pick up. Finally, in answer, the businessman gave a dull hello. Harima sounded flippant, even a little bored, but he was here. Good enough. No time for pleasantries. The minister wasted no time explaining his plan. Harima simply needed to get himself and his fellow industrialists to publish a letter, claiming the actions of both Lebrant and Ollendorf were criminal and thus both should resign their posts. It wouldn't convince either, of course. Both men were too self interested to consider resignation, but it would get the Security Council to consider alternative candidates for the job. Brow to come waited, hearing only the crackle of the receiver. He worried about what might happen next. In the worst case, Brow to come could end up in prison, but so far, the partnership between himself and the industry had held. Now they just needed to commit. Final sign of a measured response, we need to discuss more in our office, but I'm glad you called me, Hale Brautigam. I'm certain that, that the NOC would consider such a partnership. A crack in the door, and the hammer swings. The council is restless. The divisions have grown to the point anyone could point them out from a distance. Lebron certainly could. And if anyone could make the most of these fractures, it was him. Stepping to take a hold of the floor, Lebron began a speech preparing it into a series of notes hours before. The gentlemen of the council, it's obvious that the vicious uh, rot of insubordination has taken root in some who stand before me, Vineman. Rather than respecting order and the law of the Fuhr Princip, attempted a violent and miscalculated subversion, therefore I order that he and all his backers be investigated for treason. The words that had hardly left Lebron's lips before the hall erupted into chaos and shouting, none more vocal than Ollendorf, now began to calm his corner with his own speech in the making. Gentlemen of the council have a proposition here. Lebron was not put into this position by conviction of the Fuhrer. It's attempted to govern without the approval of Germania, so unsurprisingly issued plans, including the promotion of that viper, uh, Kozhennikov, that go completely against this mandate. Therefore, I propose that a veto of no confidence is held as to restore the position of a Rex Commissar and rescue the position from debasement. Again, boos and cheers fill the room to the point it could drive one mad. Again, someone stepped up to address the chaos, although Brout to come to one corner was largely silent. Gentlemen of the Council, I hereby announce that I recognize a request for an investigation into treason into open group Obo Group and Fuhrer Weinman, as well as holding discussion to the, to the legitimacy of acting in Rex Commissar Lebron's position. I volunteer to chair the discussion for the sake of even the unbiased judgment, and for once, the Council agreed. Everything's falling apart, and that's okay. Automatic support weapons? That's pretty nice. The show begins. Hello, well, child, just like clockwork. Just right, from uh, Kozhenikov's point of view. The UNC leadership walked up to the stage and gave their testimonies, all by men of them, and if Kozhenikov didn't know any better, he had thought they were reading from the same script. They more or less were, but that was not something he needed to tell anybody. The maniac was acting strictly on his own terms under no condition that's been considered even remotely to be in interest of the state or the colony, of anything even close to obey any court tenets of national socialism. By now the halls were just about thoroughly filled with those opposing to what Weinman had seemed to stand for. It was just a matter of insulting him in Ollendorf on a personal level. Every once in a while, Kozhenikov would allow himself to take a sneak look at the dude's corner of the hall, and every time he did, he could feel them growing more uncomfortable in their seats. Some even seemed invested in what the men on stage had to say. Taking another glance, Kozhenikov Notice Ollendorf stared back with what could be best described as a murderous intent. The man squint, portraying enough anger to bake the whole stage in front of him. Kostinikov did his best to ignore it, as the final testimony came to a close, though could not ignore the fact that he was having knives stared at him. With that, we call for recess to allow for deliberation on the part of the jury. The court is dismissed. Even then, as a typical chatter within the crowds began to rise up as per usual, Kostinikov could detect the tone around him. Ollendorf was practically a hanged man as it stood, and Vine was nothing more than a foregone conclusion. The only question rested with how Labron might lose himself a victory. A trial run. Gone to per perfection. I'm fine meeting. A delicate tension fell upon the office. Some mix of procedure and desperation had brought Oldendorf and Brault to come here in vain hopes of reconciliation. None of the men chose to take their seats, even the deputy himself. Could not appear to even the slightest bit weak. I still waited for someone to speak. Finally, Lebrun broke the silence. Welcome, gentlemen. I come here looking to find a solution to the crisis plaguing your great nation. I have worked with all of you for a few years now. Together, we have saved Ukraine from the vile Judeo-Bolshevism and subordinate liberals. 
Now we further the colony rots. If we wish to quell this crisis, we need a unified authority. Oldendorf chuckled, and um, what that would be your authority, correct? <clears throat> Uh, LeBron paused and slowly began to justify himself. I am the legally recognized successor to Koch and have been designated acting instead as per my position of pathetic. Oldendorf suddenly barked, all diplomacy thrown aside. You wish to fill your master's shoes. You are not a rock commissar. You are an egotistical, unprofessional arapatagic who have obtained your meager position by a fluke and have since abused it in a failed gamut for authority. I have no interest in helping clean up your mistakes. That's a ridiculous assertion, LeBron sputtered, his face red with embarrassment. The brow to come, certainly you can agree that I am the rightful rock commissar. Brow to come simply stared down, hands clenched at his side. Fine, LeBron snapped. I see both of you made your decision. Now get in my office, both of you. The trio shattered. There's nothing to do but fight. From plans to fruition. And we have a cup of coffee here, too. This is quite a long episode. Oh, Germans retreat from the channel. Wow. Well, oh, would you look at that? Yeah, especially with Bormann here. Now, there's Goring. Maybe something else, but... As Willendorf stood to make what everyone knew would be his last argument, though certainly a collective breath held as it began. If there was a time for Ollendorf to make his case, his last chance for power and deny LeBron his rightful place, it would be now. LeBron wait, himself waited patiently, wondering what card Ollendorf would play. His hand was revealed and it was weak. Ollendorf attempted to make the argument to the council for LeBron's removal, arguing that he had betrayed and weakened the nation, but LeBron saw his words ring hollow before the council, and Ollendorf seemed to know it. His words saw a tinge of exhaustion, one from the tired man who had, left, who had nothing left. He knew the connection LeBron had made, and that his appeal was the last act of a desperate man. When he returned to his place, the council broke for a few minutes before reconvening to hold the vote. One by one, the votes were counted, and a small smile grew in Labrant's face. When the vote finished, the speaker rose to read the verdict. This council finds the charges of Jörg Labrant groundless. Conversely, we consider the charges against Erwin Weinman sufficient, and he shall be immediately removed from his position. Well, how's it? Labrant allowed a small exile of really to escape, pleased and proud of what he had been achieved. The Rosenberg supporters had come through for him, as all had planned. Every single connection forged and deal struck had allowed this moment to come to fruition once more. He had demonstrated his ability to lead the nation was unchallenged. One more obstacle removed before the Ukraine was fully his, and all who stood in his way were cowed or removed. His final sentence was at hand. Add Peter Kozhenikov, which I can finally say his last name, Gustav Schlatter, Emil Mein, Meinen, Peter Kleist. Hirings and Frings? We need this, this part back, too. And firings. After all except, and after every act of subterfuge and treason, the battle is over. There will be a few changes to his office. It was high time he removed Cox things, but the deputy returned to his seat. A personality had prevailed. LeBron could focus on policy once more. Yet even now, something grinned, grinded at the back of his mind. In the past week, so many had shown their true colors. Ollendorf, Brautig, and Weinman all had proven disloyal, willing to disgrace the Reichskommissar if it might grant them a scrap of power now. He was chained to those two servants to understand his ideals. But he was a Reichskommissar, of course. The council just confirmed with that very fact. A true Reichskommissar would not contend with vipers. These men proved their inadequacy the moment they refused LeBron's reforms. Misunderstood his reforms. It was within his rights to choose a new cabinet, an ideal cabinet, a loyal cabinet, after all. How else could he govern Ukraine? How else could he implement his plans? A thought struck Labrant. It must have already been written some document for this eventuality in the years he toiled his deputy. He felt so small back then, flipping through the shelves behind his desk, that Rex himself felt almost embarrassed, reminded of those decades he spent under the feet of stronger men. Where, where were they now? This is all the document, dated 1961. Those dusty creeps may be a little crumpled, but the ideas were as powerful as ever. These ideas could be the beacon to give light to the craven masses. These were the ideas that could save a nation. He felt his office felt just a little larger. It suited him. It was his now, a deputy. No longer. His Austin is continuing to burn. The lead. The first step was cleaning Melnick's office. With that decrepit chrome finally passed, he left his office to clutter. A monument to his endless failures upon his confirmation. Kozhenikov's first decree was to send a few men in for deep cleaning and to toss out whatever effects proved unnecessary. First thing to do was go Cox portrait, the second was Melnick's. Now Kozhenikov got to watch his own portrait was placed upon his new desk. Labrat had come along as usual. It seemed this wonderful moment would be tainted by one of LeBron's sermons. Something about these recent years that brought that, that side of the Rex Commissar to the forefront. Half errant evangelist, half life counselor. LeBron leaned over to him with something that looked like a fatherly smile. I'm so excited to see in this position, Koheznikov. I've worked so tirelessly to achieve this, to create a local Ukrainian government, which understands the ways that Ukraine should be. And you, and I dare say you have the kind of intelligence and dedication to rival Germany's finest thinkers. I only wish to tell you this. Ukraine requires leadership, strong leadership. In the time of the Russians, the Tsar and the Governor has provided this. Now I will assist you in creating this, that world. Learn from me, as Chairman of the UNC, you have a responsibility to your Reich, your Grax Commissar, and your nation. I know you will not fail them. LeBron put his hand on Kohesnikov's shoulder. Kohesnikov's grimace quickly worked his way back into a smile before he delivered another of LeBron's favorite phrases. Thank you, Herr LeBron. Let's see what Borman does. He's, I'm just going to take a poll of him, but. The producer. Good morning, uh, Sivruk. 
The first race was a shun, shown under the windows of a small house. LeBron's car waited on the dirt road outside, a, fever, a driver faintly visible through the dark front window. The Rex Gumsar did not smile, but did look relaxed as he, at ease. A Servuk quickly let LeBron into his home, already fully dressed and with a relaxed smile. As Servuk, a Servuk walked LeBron into his living room, he began a spiel. Yog, my friend, it's good to see you once more. In your proper uniform, no less. From all of us in the UNC, we simply cannot thank you enough. You're what Kiev needs. A German with a Ukrainian heart, and as for myself, all ideological divides aside, I hope you know I'll take whatever work you'll throw at me. LeBron turned away to examine the apartment. I wouldn't worry, said Viruk. I'm here to provide good news to a trusted ally. You have a nicer place in this soon, I'm sure, he said idly, as I focus on Sevruk's bookshelf. I hope so, Sevruk said, leading towards the Reich's so our men like myself enjoy a life of plenty. We need it. It sustains us. Certainly, and I have had many years now to watch my fortunes wither. Hope that, with you, times will change. Let brother not turn from the bookshelf, but respond dryly, and I'm certainly certain that they will. Yeah, Sevruk, your newest appointment will assure that. Happy September, everybody. Now as we have a Rosenberg out tendency. Don't worry about Poppy and the supplies. Your Glabron had always been more of a speechwriter than a public speaker. On the podium, his well prepared remarks became slow and dry. Today he would speak as mechanically as ever, but his tone mattered little. In front of the council, a captive audience, Labron would get whatever reactions he desired. He began opening his speech in the usual fixed monotony, monotone. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the successes we have seen in the last months. A mountain of new information tells the story of a region, almost near total collapse. Quickly returning to the status of the Reich's breadbasket, the RKU, has territorial control and food insecurity for the lowest citizens of the RKU is failing or falling rapidly. The council began a loud, empty applause. LeBron continued to spin a glut of weather, well chosen statistics, each followed by the same brief and forced reverie. Now for today's primary topic. The council before us created an irregular emergency provision. Created without the order of the Fuhrer. If thus falls to the Rex Gumsar to set at his fate. The reality is this. <clears throat> it's in simple. This emergency seems end, signs of ending in every conceivable category, as I've shown you all today. As such, there's no longer need for this body. The council grew silent. Each member reconciled with what the Rex Gumsar had said. Then a few of Lebron's cronies began to clap, and then more. Gradually, the calculus began in each member's mind. Lebron had won. There's no use in withholding applause now. A bleak chapter closes. Besides... Bedside manners. The Hellcock. The doctor tells me you are at a severe risk of organ failure, even brain damage. I've been informed that you may not wake. Labron had waited until the dead of night to visit the dull, decaying coma war. It was an unpleasant place. By now, practically, the belt only served Cock's dying form. Only now, when just a scant night shift from the served the old man's, could Labron dine to visit. I wish I could show you what I've made, Labron continued. It is wonderful, though only the beginning, but wonderful. Ukrainians, Germans are working together. Many of the ties which your government so painfully severed. A whole race is being uplifted before my eyes. We're seeing that their diligence, their loyalty, even their unique creativity, even the nurse I have operating on you are Ukrainian. Lebron's face changed into a slight grin, and at last he looked down into Cox's sunken face. Can you imagine? You are the mercy of your so-called lesser race. Lebron stared at Cox's face, waiting for a hint of motion. Cox remained still. Lebron's hands tied around Cox's bed. He drew closer, his breath's heavy. I replaced your puppets, too. I brought in better men, followers of Rosenberg, who stood by him when the SS rendered him asunder. They see the value in his plans, are Cox and my plans. Lebron's eyes tightened on the mouth of the old Rex Commissar. Though the light from the hospital fluorescence was dim, he swore he saw a twist into a grimace. Lebron rose from the bed, finally satisfied. For all of Lebron's work in outwitting his opponents and crushing partisan groups, his reward is unenviable. He inherits a broken Ukraine, one torn at the seams by civil war, and people who have long since given up hope for their share at the table. Only desperate for crumbs to feed their families. Lebron promises to solve all their ills, to uplift the nation along Rosenbergite lines while remaining true to Hitler. And he's promised to make. A harder one to fulfill, as his Ukrainian sympathies could take second place to his colonial mission. A contradiction his dutifully, he dutifully ignores. It is meaningless when Lebron already knows the truth. National Socialism will solve all of Ukraine's problems. But will this alleged truth uh, mean anything to a nation that has already lost everything when its chance at true freedom was crushed under an iron boot? Well, my friends, if that concludes our little campaign playing as Jörg Labrant. An interesting man, I will say so. The strongest, we should no longer have this here, but I wish we was more focuses. I want more. I just want more, man. I just want more, 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 more. But we'd eventually, eventually, not immediately, but eventually we will go with uh, Oldenbor Oldendorf's path, Brautagam's path, the Communist path, the, and the various other Ukrainian paths that there are. But if you enjoyed the video and the campaign, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what you thought of the campaign. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.